Okay, now I think uh, Tammy is okay. Okay, good good morning, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm Chosen Tang, the uh, Secretary General of ISEG. First of all, I would like to welcome all of you to this uh, ISEG webinar series on behalf of uh, Professor Bing Shi and uh, ISEG. Thank you for your attending. The ISEG webinar series is a new ISEG event. We will periodically invite distinguished speakers in and out of our society to uh, talk about the latest innovations and the researches in environmental geotechnology. So today is the number two talk of this series. We are honored to invite Dr. Amin Tang from uh, Ecole de Bon Paris Tech, EMPC France. Actually, uh, I have known me for more than 15 years because uh, I was a PhD student in EMPC in 2007 and uh, we worked together. He gave me a lot of help. Now, please allow me to introduce him briefly. Dr. Amintan is a research director at uh, Ecole de Bonne, Paris Tech. And his research interests include unsaturated soils, geological storage of uh, radioactive active waste, soil atmosphere interaction, geothermal energy, transportation geotechnicals, and the gas hydrate bearing sediments. So me was a principal investigator of several important projects. Now he has published more than 140 peer-reviewed journal papers. Me server is a uh, edited board member of several reputable journals in the domain of geological and the geotechnical engineering. So today his topic is uh, effect of uh, temperature in soil mechanics for energy and uh, the environment. Some examples. So let's welcome Dr. Tan. So please, you can start me. Hey, thank you. Hello, everybody. Thank you very much, Joseph, for the very nice uh, introduction. It also thank you for giving me a chance to present, to share my works uh, within this uh, webinar. So for my talk today, I first uh, just uh, show a little bit about, present a little bit about uh, Econ de Pont because it's in Econ de Pont is his name in France. So maybe uh, just explain uh, it uh, literally, Le Conde Pont, that means school of beaches um, in Paris. So it, it, it has been, uh, it was found in uh, 1747. Uh, it's one, it's the first uh, engineering school in France. And uh, that was founded in Paris first. And then in, the, in 1997, uh, 1997 uh, we, we create a new campus in Matnavale, it's outside uh, Paris. So one of the famous uh, students from this school, you may, you may know here some, some, some names, Navier, Okoshi, Udassi, uh, in, in, our, in, in our domain in soil mechanics or geoengineering. Geo and uh, now the school is, in, uh, the school is now in, in outside Paris. And uh, we can call now, is, this is a graduate school for in, uh, engineering for the ecological transitions. Because the, the, the school belonged to the Ministry of uh, Ecological uh, Transition in France. Uh, it's, if you compare to the other university, it's a, a small uh, college. It's, uh, in total, there are around 2,000 students in, in the school. In the, in the school. Um, <clears throat> uh, um, I work uh, in, in this school. I work in the lab laboratory called Navier, the name, name of the scientific, scientist. And in, in, in the laboratory in Navier, uh, it's a joint unit between Econ de Pont, uh, Gustave Eiffel University, and also the National Center for Scientific Research. Uh, there are uh, around 170 people in the staff. And the research, research topic is on mechanics and physics of materials, structures, geomaterials, and their applications to geotechnics, civil engineering, transport, Geophysics and energy. Uh, in the lab, uh, we there are four teams. Uh, so 
I'm in the team in geotechnics. So in geotechnics, we work on research and teaching on geotechnical engineering and soil mechanics. Another team work on architecture, material and structure, where we do research and on mechanics and durability of material and structures in civil engineering. The third team is we call multi-scale. We in fact in this team we 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 work on different scale of the material of the structure and how to to try to see how uh, these different scale can interact between them. And we have the, the first team on geophysics and and porous media. So in this team, the research is on granular materials, complex fluids, paste, and uh, suspension, soft matter, porous media. So uh, introduced by Professor Charles Chantin, I've been working <coughs> uh, on geological high level radioactive waste disposal. This was my PhD thesis was on the effect of temperature uh, on clay. Uh, and then, um, and then I, I uh, or when I integrate the, the lab, I, 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 I receive a funding to start my research on uh, energy geostructure from the National, uh, National Research Agency. Uh, and in uh, 2015, I, uh, I received also another grant to work on gas hydrate, uh, gas hydrate building sediments. And now more recently, I'm starting to work on ground fitting. Why I show these two projects? Because oh, when discussing with Professor Chachantin, I would like to see what would be uh, the main idea, uh, what would be the topic I would like to share with you. So I, I would think that if, uh, if I gather these different projects, the, 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 the main idea is the effect of temperature on, this, on the mechanical behavior of soils. Uh, that's why I, 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 choose, I, I choose this, uh, this topic to share with you today. And so for the next slides, I will show different examples here. And you see that the range of temperature change from the high temperature here up to 80 degree and go lower and lower up to zero degree here. So just, just an idea of the present of the, of the next slides. So first I would like to, to present some, some example, some, some result uh, from our, our group around geological radioactive waste disposal range of temperature between 20 and 80 degree. Uh, for this research. Uh, uh, just uh, a background if for, uh, for who though have, uh, don't know about this topic. So uh, the idea is that in France, but also in other countries in, in Europe, and also I think in, in, in China, we are, uh, people are looking uh, how to store the radioactive waste disposal uh, in, 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 in the ground. So the concept in France is that we choose a site where, uh, where you have a layer, a layer of 200 uh, mets thick of clay, we call colorable exfoliant clay. So this, this layer situated uh, at around 500 mets depth below the, the ground. So the idea is that we dig uh, uh, up to this 200, uh, 500 kilometers, uh, sorry, sorry, 500 mets depth in the ground here, and we create a different tunnel inside to store the radioactive waste disposal. So this picture is a zoom of this zone here. So where you can see the, the tunnel here, and then the waste disposal canister uh, here. So when we store this, uh, sorry. Oh, okay. Sorry, we have technical problems here. Okay. Um, so once we after well, this this uh, zone, we work for during a uh, ninety year period of storage. That means we we fill progressively the the, the waste in this field, and it within take in France it, they estimate that it will take around one ninety years. After these ninety years, they will close uh, the the zone. So here is a prediction what happened after this zone was closed. And we see that because of the heat emitted from the waste here, because, because this is radioactive waste disposal, 
So this is a waste canister show here in blue color. And around the canister, we have a, we call that a, 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 a layer of uh, compact expensive clay, usually bentonite. Uh, uh, and then around this is uh, argillite. So it's a colorful asphaltian clay stone here. So what happened is that in, when the canister will hit the soil, uh, the surrounding soil, we can see that the temperature in, in the bentonite and also in the asphalt can increase, can increase. And sometimes it, sometime it depends on the concept that it can increase up to 80 degrees. So that's why the, the question is, uh, the big question at that time, so this concept have been created, let's say 40 years ago in France. So the big question in the research is that what would happen uh, for soy, for clay, is this when it's subject to, to heating. So there, there has been numerous projects to work on the effect of temperature on, on soy in this condition. Um, so in the lab, what we did is that we, we, uh, we use clay, uh, we, we take the color of for the clay, we put in the charge and cell, and then we heat. Uh, the soil. So here I show the result when you heat the soil, the, the, this clay at a saturated state under drained conditions. So we heat slowly the soil. Uh, so what happened here is that we show the temperature and the strain. So you can see the, uh, the strain in two directions because the soil is, the, the clay here is anisotropic. But what you can see is the total volume chain here, this total volume chain here. It, so what we can, what we can uh, observe is that when you hit the soil under drain condition, you have a contraction. So the, the volume of soil decrease is very small. It's the, for this soil, because it's very stiff uh, clay stone, it look like, in fact, it looks like rock. Uh, so 0, 0.1% personally, but still it's important because it's rock. So when you change, it hits the temperature from around 20 up to 80, the, you, you, inc you induced a, a contraction in this soil. So it was a surprising at the beginning because it's rock and we didn't, and can, you cannot imagine that when you hit a rock, the, the, the material contract, because normally when you hit some material, you, ha you have a, a thermal expansion. But we, we explain this finally by the fact that this is a clay stone. So inside the clay stone, we have here's a picture where you have the clay matrix. Is uh, clay matrix is um, uh, here and we can cite here. So the clay is some. You have here some picture of clay where you have clay layer, clay particle. And we have bounce water here, absorb water on on layer. So what happened is that when you hit this material, the temp the when hit the temperature, the water absorption decrease. So the distance under stress, you can reduce the distance between the clay, uh, clay, uh, clay uh, palette here, clay layer here. So it decreases distance between this, and so, so it gets induce a dec small decrease in volume. So this is the main mechanism, microscopic mechanism that explains the thermal contraction behavior of clay, and uh, what we can for other clay we can ex where clay, we. Ex we can see that when you hit the temperature, hit, hit the soil, hit clay, that reduce the, the shear strength between clay, clay particle here. Again, maybe because of this water absorption. So, so the shear strength between clay particle can be decreased. So that can heating can decrease also the shear strength of clay. So this within this main idea, there are some there are some model. So we, we develop a model that we, we suggest the mechanism that uh, is, uh, instead of, uh, in the space of uh, deviated direct stress and uh, mean stress here, we add another dimension with temperature and the, 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 year, the year stress decrease when the temperature increase. So there are two mechanisms, the term, term, we call that thermal year uh, because of when you hit the soil and you can induce the plastic, uh, plastic uh, strength. And also when you, load the soil, so increase the, the mechanical load, you can induce also the uh, plastic uh, strength. So there are two mechanisms that we induce in this model. One is we call Thermandir, uh, TY, and also that can predict the expansion, expansion and contraction uh, during heating. And also 
an effect of temperature on the peak consolidation pressure mechanical here. So within this, this model, we can predict the, the experimental result, which showing when you hit the soil at high stress, you can induce immediately thermal con contraction. And when you cool down, it, you reduce again uh, the volume of soil. But for at low stress level here, when you hit soil, we can induce a thermal dilation. That is uh, the main idea of this model. So uh, what happens if you hit the soil under undrained uh, conditions? Uh, so uh, the, here is just one result when you increase uh, temperature. So this is uh, the blue line here is temperature. So temperature increase from around 25 up to 80 here by step. And we wait each time, long time to, be, uh, to, to reach the stabilization. And what happened in the cell is that the pore pressure increase also when you hit the soil under undrained condition here. So pore pressure increase from the beginning at around four, four megapascal and it reached up to 10 megapascal by the end here. So uh, we, within this, we defined, uh, people usually define a, a, a coefficient we call thermal pressurization coefficient, lambda, that measures the chain of pore pressure, the increase of pore pressure when you increase the temperature under undrained condition in clay. So we explain this in, by the fact that the thermal expansion question of each, min, each mineral in the material is, is different. For clay, uh, for the material, for solid fraction in, in soil, it's around between three and one, uh, 10 minus five here. But for water, it's very high. Uh, this thermal expansion question is very high for water. It's 10 times larger than the other solid fraction. So when you hit the material in an undrained condition, uh, water will expand much more than solid. So that water expansion that will induce this uh, increase of pore pressure because of heating. So here, this, this table summarized, but of course there are other uh, parameters that will, will define this, this increase. It's belong on the, it depends on the compressibility of solid fraction compressibility of water. So for clay, the compress the solid fraction, the compressibility is, is uh, higher than compressibility of, of water. So the thermal pressurization coefficient is smaller. But for rock, for sandstone, where the solid fraction is stiffer, in this case, this, this coefficient can be higher here. So this is the main idea. So we develop also some theoretic, theoretic uh, formulation to estimate uh, this coefficient from uh, the from this uh, thermal expansion coefficient of, of different uh, material here inside, and you, of course using compressivity of each, uh, each material inside, using uh, porous uh, porous mecha mechanics. Uh, so, and then what what would what is the uh, the, what can be the consequence of increase of pore pressure when you hit soil under undrained condition. So we see that in the, in the tunnel, when you dig the tunnel, you can create some zone or we can, end, uh, we can uh, induce some damage zone around the tunnel. So that we create, just because of excavation of the tunnel, we can create some shear band around the tunnel. And then when you hit the soil, what we, it can, uh, have a stronger effect on this shear, shear, shear zone. So what we did in the, in the lab is that we, uh, we use a small sample here. This is the size of the sample is around uh, 10 centimeter height and uh, 10 centimeter in diameter, but it's a hollow, hollow cylinder uh, uh, specimen. So we put in the charge cell this sample, and then we perform first shearing, uh, 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 shearing, under constant, P, uh, at constant mean stress. So this is the stress pass when you dig your tunnel under uh, normally. So when you shear this sample under, uh, to create a shear band, and then we reduce the shear stress up to G, this point here. And under this shear set, we maintain, we maintain the piston up, uh, uh, about the, uh, uh, in, the, in the cell, and then we hit uh, the specimen. So what, what we see that during heating, 
the shear stress decrease, so the mean stress decrease or so, and it's follow a line that cross the, this, uh, the, this uh, origin point here. So if we measure the, the strain, it look like during shearing, uh, the shear, uh, the heating reactive, this shear band, just because of heating. So that can have a consequence for the, the rain tunnel. Uh, when you when you hit the tunnel, this shear band, we saw that it was stabilized because we decreased the, the stress here, can be reactive, reactivated again, just because of, by heating. So this is a, Another, well, so we can explain this also by the fact that uh, when you hit, we increase the pore pressure, so it decrease, uh, decrease the, the mean stress. But at the same time, because heating decrease the shear stress, the shear strength of the material at the same time. So these two phenomena combined can induce this phenomenon. Um, so again, if we put this in the in the in in uh, using the same model that I showed before, but now to simulate undrained uh, conditions, we can again uh, reproduce the change of pore pressures when you change the temperature here, and uh, you can predict also what happened in a, a test where we perform first undrained shear shear test at uh, twenty one degree here, and then we, when you keep this shear uh, deviatoric uh, dev dev stress and then we hit the soil so heating will decrease heating under undrained condition will decrease the power pressure so it uh, increase power pressure so it decrease the mean effective stress so can it can reach again the the failure here so it's we call that the thermal failure just because of heating you can induce also failure So I think uh, within this, I finish this first part. So just to summarize some, some main idea uh, about the thermal effect in the context of geological radioactive waste disposal. Uh, so in this context, normally temperature, temperature vary between 20 and 80 degrees. And uh, we work, main, uh, here I show result on uh, a clay stone from France, but there are also other stiff clays like boom clay, or opalunis clay in Switzerland, boom clay in Belgium. And also there are also, we, we work also on compacted bentonite because you have also the effect of temperature on compacted bentonite just around the canister. And uh, normally when you hit the soil, you can induce thermal expansion of soil particle and thermal expansion of, of pore water. And heating will reduce shear resistance between contact between soil particle and change also pore water viscosity and heating will decrease water absorption. So these this, this are the effect of, at the microscopic level. So, so the consequence on the macroscopic level is that when you hit the soil under uh, drain condition, you can induce thermal volume change of soil. And you hit the soil under undrained condition and you can induce excess pore pressure. So all this can induce other uh, consequence uh, at the scan of the tunnel. So, the, the so this is the first example on uh, geological radioactive waste disposal. I will move now to the second part uh, where we work on energy geostructure. So, in this, for this application, the temperature vary between zero and thirty degree only. So it's smaller. So just some word about energy geostructure. So energy geostructure that we use geostructure like tunnel, pie, diaphragm wall that, 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 I, that are used to support the load from the building here. But the idea is that inside this structure, we, we integrate the heat exchanger trip and uh, in, inside this, this structure. And then we, we, we connect this heat exchanger tube to a ground source heat pump. So within, within this system, in fact, uh, we can exchange heat between the building and soil via this structure and using the heat pump. So the idea is that during, uh, we can use this system only for cooling and also for heating. In summer, so it's hot around, 
and you can with the heat pump we can eject the the heat into the ground so that can cool down the building and then in winter we can use again this heat pump but it's changed the temperature in the ground and then we can use the, the heat in the ground to heat the building during winter why because normally the the, the temperature in the ground below like between you know, 10 and 50 meters depth here temperature is quite constant in europe it's between it's like between 30 50 degree in europe it's constant during the whole year so we can profit this temperature the heat in the ground to hit the soil, hit the building or cool down the building. So in this application, uh, temperature of the, the, of the structure will change between zero degree during winter and 30 degree during summer. And the question is that how, how if this thermal change in the structure can influence the mechanical behavior of the structure that in, in, in geotechnical engineering we know already. So this is the, the main mechanism that, that we can list here, what would happen in, the, in, in this, this concept. So for, for the soil, uh, when temperature change, as you know already that we can change the profit flow with the convection expansion, we, have, we need to consider the heat transfer in soil uh, it changes the pressure, changes the porosity of soil, and which that can induce ground movement. And for the structure, its structure here is a pie or the tunnel or the diaphragm wall. You can have the structure movement. You can we should consider also heat transfer in the structure. And so the pipe that means the pipe inside the structure here. So in our group, we focused mainly on the ground movement the interaction between valve movement and the structure, because this part is the, mainly the mechanical part. The other part is related to the heat transfer. Uh, uh, so in the next, so the next slide, I will show some results in this, where we see what are the mechanical interaction between the structure and the, and the ground, the soil. That's the interface. So first, we try to see, we want to, to see if finally there are an effect of, of temperature on the shear strength of soil structure interface. So what we did is that we put, we, we use a standard uh, shear apparatus uh, where we put on the first, the, the lower half, we use soil or a concrete, this is a concrete here that can simulate the pie, for example. And then on the other half part, we put soil on the top and we put all the cell in the thermal a temperature controller called BAT here and you, to, to control the temp temperature of the cell. And, we, and then we perform direct shear test. And the result finally shows up when you change the temperature in the range between five degree and 40 degree here, uh, the, all the shear parameters like friction angle and cohesion did not change much with temperature in this range. So we conclude that the effect of temperature on the shear chain of the soil structure is negligible. So in this case, what would happen uh, at, the, at the structure level? So what we do in our lab is that we use physical modeling. So small, we use a small scale energy pipe. So here you can see uh, uh, the, the, the physical modeling, the modeling that we use. So the pie, it's a small it's a small trip of like two centimeter in diameter and the length is only like 60 centimeter depth in soil only it's a small uh, small scale pie so the soil massive here is in in the tank of, of about 60 centimeter in diameter and height is around one meter here so to simulate this the, the load applied to the pie we use a water tank to apply a uh, constant load in the top of the pie here. And then we connect the pipe with the heating cooling circul circulator. So we can change the temperature of the pipe uh, during the test. So the main test program is that we maintain constant the apply oxygen head load. And then we change the temperature of the pipe between five and 35 degree here. And we measure what happened uh, on the top of the pie here. So to measure the, the pie head displacement. 
for example, here is a test program. If we apply, for example, here I show the test E2, that means we apply very small, to, that means there are no uh, ASEAN uh, load at the top of the pie. And when you change the temperature of the pies here, and we can see that heating will induce the pie, uh, pie head uh, heat, and then cooling will induce pie head segment. And this is exactly correspond to the pie thermal expansion curve. That means you just use the thermal expansion curve of the pie and put it here. It's a dust, dust light that we cannot see here because it's exactly the same behavior. But if we do the same test, but for we apply load for the test E3 here. Uh, so for this test, E3 here, which will apply load of 100 uh, Newton is uh, like 20% of the maximum uh, load of the pies. And when you see that during cooling, of course, cooling induces a pie head segment because cooling, the, the, you have a thermal contraction of the pie cooling. But even during heating, uh, the pie heave a little bit, but much more smaller than the theoretical uh, pie thermal expansion curve here. And again, cooling, you can have a set uh, and heating, you have a heave, but smaller. So if it, it is two cycles here, the cumulative pie head segment is irreversible. So that means we, when you apply load on the top of the pie and then you apply thermal cycle, you can induce a progressive thermal segment of the pie, of the pie head. So we explain this by the fact that you have, when you impose a thermal cycle in the pie, you have thermal dilation and contraction. So that like a, a cyclic behavior of the pie inside the soil massif and then can move down the, the pie, the pie can move down because of the load on the top here. So here they just come, they just come some comparison, comparison between the, this is a mechanical behavior of pie, and this is the, the settlement induced by the thermal load. So just, the, the, just, just for the comparison. So here it's just the result for one or two cycles. So then we want to do what happen if we perform 30 cycle. So 30, one cycle normally is, can represent one year of a pie. That means heating, uh, heating during summer and cooling during winter. So we say that, okay, if we perform 20 years simulation, that means 20 cycle, what would happen? So here is again the test program. So we, we apply load, uh, we compare to the uh, intimated, uh, the pi resistance, let's say that pi capacity. We estimate by mechanical load, and then we now apply the load correspond to 0%, 20%, 40%, and 60% of the pi capacity. So normally for a normal spy during the standard, normally we, the load, pi head load should be between 20 and 40% of the pi capacity. And for each load constant here, we apply 30 thermal cycle. So what we observe is that when you apply the thermal cycle for a, a zero load here, the, the pi segment is very small, is negligible. But when the, when the pi is subject to, to a, a higher load, 20, 40, 60, we, in, we, we observe a segment of the pie progressively with thermal cycle. And this segment is higher at the beginning and, and decrease, the rate decrease at higher uh, number of cycle. And it tends it tend to reach a stabilization, but after uh, 30 cycle for high load here. So this, this, the, the, the results are obtained on small scale pies, but that that can allow us to see to say that for the for, for the green scale, maybe that this phenomenon can should be considered for the design of the price. Even if the, the segment can be small, around one person of the diameter of the pie here. Uh, so uh, then and then we, we try to see how, how we can predict this by using a numerical simulation. So the idea that was, we use a standard standard uh, software that, that without any thermal mechanical uh, coupling inside. So for example, here's the, the first simulation we use uh, 
practice, at that time, we just impose the time and dilation of the pi only. This is the time and dilation of the pi. We impose to this pi, and we see what happens if the pi dilate and contract in, the, in, in soil, in soil here. So we, so finally we see that even with very simple numerical methods, we can predict what happened even here. These are the result obtained from full scan, full scan test, test, one test on on London, in London and one the other test performed in, in Lausanne. So we can what in in the in the in this work in the finite element method, we just impose the pi temperature measure in the DC test. And then we, we calculate the pi head displacement and also the Austrian strain in the pi. So the continuous line is a simulation and the experimental data as a dot here. So we see that finally, even with the very simple uh, method of numerical modeling method, we can reproduce what would happen at the full scale. So the main idea is that just we just use only the thermal expansion question of the price only. And we ignore the effect of temperature on, on, on soil. And then we said, but what would happen with, for clay? Because it's clay and saturated clay, maybe we have a pore pressure increase, maybe you have an effect of temperature on the shear, everything. So which is this, we perform tests also using the small scale test. We perform te tests on kaolin clay, saturated clay, and we obtain the same behavior that means heating heating in the heave of the pie and cooling in the sediment. But when we perform several cycles, we can still observe uh, a sediment of the pie, except this case where there are no uh, load at the top of the pie. And then we use another more complex software where we can, Im we can uh, impose also the thermal uh, expansion, not only in the pie, but also in soil to see what happened. But finally, we see that we can, we can reproduce also this, the behavior obtained in, the, in, 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 in soil, for in, in, the, in the model. So within this result, we, we go further with another type of, of um, structure. This is diaphragm, diaphragm wall. So this is a test that has been done in, in Nanjing. It's a small scan test have not done in Nanjing. And so I just show here, it's a big tail when you have the diaphragm wall here. And in the diaphragm wall, you have the, uh, the tube, heating tube here on one side of the diaphragm wall. You see the decent diaphragm wall and the heating tube is on one side. So we can imagine that when you hit uh, the wall on one side, so the, you can induce thermal dilation on this zone. So you can see that the, the wall can, can be dilated but on one side only. So that's why you can see that uh, the, 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 the deformation of the wall have this shape here because it was hit on one side. So again, we, we say that we try to use a simple method, NIMCA method, using only thermal dilation, thermal expansion of, of wall and of the wall and the dry sand here. And you put it here to, to predict the, the behavior and we see that the numerical result can can correspond well with the experimental result in this test at this scale at uh, one meter a small scale of time from world so within all these the studies we conclude that finally in from the geotechnical from the engineering point of view if we want to predict the movement of the pie or the structure generally because of thermal cycle maybe just using thermal volume chains of the structure, or maybe just put in the graph movement using standard uh, numerical code. Okay, we can, we can predict this uh, quite uh, easily. Of course, I didn't talk about the thermal uh, transfer. It's more complicated. There are, there's a lot of work on this, but it's not our domain on heat transfer between soil structure and also in the heat pipe. So that is the second pass. So I, I go quickly to the other second, uh, to the other pass. So, and, and then after that, we move to a lower range of temperature between zero and 10 degree uh, to, on gas hydrate bearing sediments. So just some work on, work on gas hydrate bearing sediments. So uh, in the 
in the marine sediments, why in the marine sediment here, at a temp, at a depth of around 1,000 meter, the pressure is around uh, uh, seven, uh, seven megapascal. And also in the zone, when temperature is low, in this zone, normally in this condition, when gas, methane gas, go from the bottom and reach this zone, and, and where we have water, high pressure, and low temperature, methane gas will react with water and form some some form hydrate. So methane, we call methane hydrate or gas hydrate. It look like ice, but it be form. It's a mixture of water and gas. And in the range of high pressure, several megapascal here, and low temperature, but temperature can be in the range between zero or 10 degrees, for example, here. Because if temperature is lower than that, we have already ice. So methane can react more difficultly with ice, but can react with water easily and that to form um, hydrate. So this is the picture of the picture of the sediment where you have hydrate inside. So we have like it look like frozen soil, but the the difference is that when you take it out like that, the temp the pressure decrease, and methane gas can be uh, dissociated from this material quickly. So we cannot keep this this same uh, long time because you, you can have uh, methane gas dissociate and ex uh, expel from this material quickly. So why people? want to work on that because this with the chain with the climate change uh with the climate chain this temperature in this zone are in, increased quickly so that can release a big quantity of gas uh, of methane gas store in this hydrate zone and that, that that can increase the quantity of methane gas in the in the air so this is the first thing in some countries like china japan uh people are thinking about or try to recover this methane gas to use uh, like an, an alternative energy resource. And of course, because of uh, climate change, uh, change so the, uh, the increase, the dissociation of this uh, hydrate can reduce the shear, uh, the, the mechanical strength of this zone. So that can induce the slope instability of, in this zone. So this, that can induce a huge tsunami, for example, in the sea floor, and that can have a big consequence uh, also on uh, in this zone. So for, for these three principal motivations, there are a lot of work to in our domain to try to relate between mechanical properties and microstructure. Uh, so in uh, in uh, in our lab, what we did in our project is that we try to see what happened at different scale. As a sand sample, uh, when you when you create hydrate inside, so here the sand, sand particle uh, like around two hundred uh, micrometer sand, and you compact uh, wet sand here. When you have to, you know, the the X-ray microtomograph uh, picture of the sand grain. Here is the water, and here is the gas, methane gas. We put in confining pressure of ten megapascal, and then in this condition we inject, we increase the pressure uh, methane gas up to seven megapascal and we reduce the temperature of the, the material to between two and four degrees. So in, this, in these conditions, methane gas will react with water here to form hydrate. So hydrate is, is uh, like I, I said, like ice. So we, we see if how, how hydrate are formed. Is around the sand grain or in the contact between the sand grain or in, in the pore space between sand grain. I don't know who's writing here. Okay, um, so in, in, in this project, we, we use different techniques to, to investigate this material, or we use trash and cell just to measure the, the mechanical properties. We use also the, uh, magnetic resonance imaging to see how hydrate form inside the, the sample. When we use also synchrotron X-ray microtomography to see uh, at the grain screen, what happened at the grain screen. And you use also optical microscopy to, to see the hydrate at the interface between sand grain and, uh, sand grain and water. I'll show here just some example. 
when, for example, here we increase the pore pressure, so we increase the, when temperature the same is fixed at two degree, and then we increase the pressure of the gas up to seven megapascal here. So in this condition, seven megapascal the pressure of gas and two degree, that is a condition that can form hydrate. So we can see that hydrate saturation is the same, increase quickly, and it reach uh, the stabilization about after two, two days almost. So here is a hydrate distribution along inside the same, it's measured by MRI. So you see that the hydrate distribution is quite homogeneous along the same at different time. So within that thought we say, okay, the same is homogeneous. So what happened uh, at the, from the mechanical point of view? So again, here's a result where we increase the pore pressure at around four, three or four degrees, the form hydrate. So what we see is that the, the mechanical properties are measured by the compressional wave velocity. So we know, you may know that compressional uh, wave velocity that represents the stiffness of the same. So we see that the stiffness of the same increase quickly. Also, also it like the, the same kinetic that we observe, like we observe like the hydrate saturation here. Here is the stiffness that increase with the same uh, kinetic. So, and, and then when you when we plot the final value of stiffness as a function of hydrate saturation, we can see that the higher hydrate saturation, the higher stiffness. And when you compare this with geophysical model, we can see that that can correspond to, to these two models or hydrate at the grain, or around the sand grain or at the contact with, between the sand grain. So we, we try to observe what happened at the smaller scale here. So at the smaller scale, finally, uh, at the beginning, we have sand grain, or methane gas, liquid water, and after 10 hours, so we see that at the, here we create a zone of hydrate layer around the same grain and also at the contact between the grain here. So that means, okay, it's the geophysical model shows that hydrate is at the contact or around the grain, but in reality, the, the morphology is more complex than that. It's a mix between these two models here that confirm why our result stay between these two models. I show just quickly, but and then we in uh, with the optical microscopy we see that this layer is not the green hydrate layer, buck layer, but it's more complex. It's a hydrate crystal, and also we have some hydrate spikes here. Uh, what we see in this scale is the hydrate spike, spike or crystal here. Uh, so, and then just when you see that when you inject, inject water, the the stiffness decrease quickly, that correspond to, to the geophysical model where hydrate stay in the, in the space between the, the sand, we call that pore filling. And uh, this is what we observe also with our, uh, by X-ray microtomography here, where we see hydrate, hydrate particle in the liquid between, between the spore space here. So just uh, to come back to, to, to summarize this work quickly, uh, this is a very complex question on methane hydrate in sediment. There are lots of work ongoing. What we did here in our lab, we just tried to, to perform a multi-scale uh, characterization. And we realized that it's, there are lots of physics phenomena inside. And uh, towards modeling is very, very complex, uh, very complex. Just, uh, yeah, just a quick uh, comments on that. I will finish quickly on soil freezing because we just start to work on this, uh, just some idea. So why, uh, well, so in geotechnical engineering, we know about the effect of free soil cycle on soil. That is, is quite well known after winter, you can see the damage of road here. And people explain that because of when uh, in the pavement, the road bed and frozen soil here, and during, due to freezing, uh, due to freezing water can be absorbed from the from the from the bottom and and start increase the ice land here and and then during winter when ice land is is thaw that can create a, a, a gap here and that can damage the the road. This is a, what people explained. So 
in in geotechnics for, for, for to give a better explain on that we can have a, here a simulation from from Thomas uh, where you can see that it, we, they can predict the change of temperature in soil and how Iceland are, are formed different Iceland are formed in frozen soil uh, and they explain this by the pore pressure decrease so they uh, the, by using uh, equation, they explain this by the, the suction in in this Iceland, which uh, absorb water from the bottom and to move here. So that is a mechanism uh, that explain is a few. So this is a few, okay, uh, sedimenter. So we, what we did recently is that we perform tests at the same scale only. So this is the same live to sample. Um, lime, lime the same. Here is the same where we perform uh, lime the same that we, we treat so the, the clay soil at different uh, lime content, and then we perform uh, the uh, this is the unconfined compression test on uh, the strength on, on soil. So it's, it's standard to know that with the increase of curing time and the increase of lime, uh, lime content, we can have higher uh, uh, unconfined shear strength on this sample. But what we did after that is that we we use the same we we repeat the same, the similar same, but it, before before testing we perform one free source cycle on this same free source cycle. That means we 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 reduce the temperature of the same to minus twenty, and then we increase uh, we to minus twenty uh, during. Uh, 24 hour and then we increase the temperature again to 20 degree. So we, we freeze the same foot and then insert the same again. So we see that after each one cycle, the mechanical strength decrease. So for maybe for, for treated same, this one is decreased only from the big, the, uh, the largest value here is 3.5 decrease to two. But for the other here, for example, where, where for soil with very low lime content here, it decreased completely to zero. The, the strength. So we explain this by the damage that we observe in the in the same here. So it is the the the, in the the bottom of the same. The freezing is from the outside. The temperature in, imposed outside the same, and we see that that the freezing and thawing creates a, the fracture around around the center of the same here. So that means we can compare again. We, we think that again, this is what happened in the field, whereas Iceland is formed here, and we can suppose that during freezing, we form Iceland here, and during thawing, Iceland disappear. But we still see this fracture around the same here. So here, I just put again the closest couple relation to to predict the suction induced by by freezing. So we see that. Just an example, if you decrease temperature of around one degree, subcryosuction will go up to one megapascal. So that explains all this mechanism. Yes, that's, I, I finished my presentation here. I don't have a lot of concluding remarks on this presentation, but uh, just to say that uh, this event, when you talk about effective temperature in soil mechanics and for energy and geo and the environment, uh, there are a lot of physics behind this, and uh, we should investigate uh, the behavior at different scales. Uh, so the main idea in this is that to, we need to identify what are the main physical mechanisms and what are the rep representative scale to investigate. Yes, that's, I think that would be my, my comment on this presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mia. Very uh, wonderful talk. And uh, I think uh, it brings us many new ideas about the temperature effect on soil. Especially, I think your, uh, your talk can give uh, idea or uh, for the young researchers how to organize the research. For example, how to find the scientific uh, uh, issues or problems from the project and then to develop new equipment to study the, uh, the issues and then to uh, observe some uh, phenomena or new findings and then to try to 
uh, analyze the result uh, or the mechanism from the micro uh, micro scale or microstructure, and then to develop some uh, numerical modeling or uh, theoretical modeling. So I think this is uh, from your research. I think we can uh, benefit a lot. So thank you again. Now we have uh, some uh, uh, time for the question. So is there some uh, questions, please? Hello, Professor Tang. My name is Chen Qing from Nanjing University. Thank you for your excellent speech. And uh, I have one question that uh, in the first part of your speech, you mentioned that during, uh, 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 during the heating test, you found that the temperature almost have no effect on the shear parameters, both the cohesion and the friction angle. But in your test, you also confirmed that heating will re heating results in the thermal contraction. So I think if, if heating can result in a thermal contraction, so the heating may, re the, the cohesion should be, uh, is likely to be increased and the friction angle may be decreased, but it's different from your test results. Can, can you give us some explanation? And I want to... <laughs> yeah, I, I, I agree with you. It's very confusing. At least there, there are a lot of work on this and until now, uh, only recently people tried to clarify this because in the first uh, work, when you read some paper on the effect of temperature on shear chain of soy, these, some people see that you know, heating can induce increase of shear chain, and some other work say that heating can decrease the shear chain. <laughs> yes. Yeah, because in fact, uh, so in uh, I can see I can show this. Normally, if you if you increase the temperature, the the shear chain decrease. But during heating, if you let uh, if you during heating you you heat the soil under high high pressure, if during heating you have the contraction the compression of soil, the shear chain the here yeah, you, you spend well with this method. If you if you maintain high pressure here and then you increase temperature, so during heating you have plastic chain here, so this plastic chain will move the 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 yes the the yes surface here. So at the same time, you have the increase of the surface, but the year surface itself represents the decrease of the decrease of change with temperature. So it depends on how the plastic change increase. If the plastic change is very high, in this case, the shear change that you can measure is high because it's the 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 the, the loading surface has been moved. But if the plastic change is small or, or there are no plastic change, in this case, you will observe that the, the strength it decreases because of temperature. So there are two phenomena inside during heating. The, the decrease of temperature because following this, this loop, but you have also, if you have plastic chain, you have the movement of all this surface towards on, from left to side. So you should, in, in, in the modeling, you have two com phenomena combined. So it depends how, how you do the test that it can also increase or decrease of, of stress, of the strength, sorry. I don't know if it's uh, clear. Uh, yeah, yes, yes. Thank you very much. Uh, and I, I, okay. I still have one more question uh, that in your uh, next test, you mentioned that the some 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 effects on the shear behavior and about the uh, friction angle. And uh, because I, I'm now in Professor Charlton Tang's group and I just are wondering for, uh, Given sample, if we have the crack or or the shear band uh, with different angles, will the thermal effects results in uh, different uh, contraction in terms of the uh, in in terms of in the perpendicular and the horizontal direction? You mean the effect of temperature on shear strength or on, on crack behavior? I, I'm... Uh, because you show you show one slide that there is a shear band, right? 
Ah, uh, yeah, here. And, and I, I read your paper before, and you discussed about the, 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 the contraction in two directions, right? Ah, uh, yes. Yes, because he, the shear band is yeah, quite yeah. similar to the crack. So I just uh, wondering mm -hmm. uh, where the, because the soil, is, uh, most of the soil are anisotropy. So I'm wondering mm -hmm. if the crack or the, or similar to the shear band has a different direction and the, the, the contraction in two directions may be different. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, you're right. In, this is this material is quite complicated. It's an anisotropic material here, and then mm -hmm. when you hit so you have contraction, the, the the behavior can be slightly anisotropic here. You see, they are mm -hmm. different between the two directions. Yeah. But when you shear the, this material, the shear band is different. The, the shear band does not follow the the bedding plane. This is a bedding yeah. plane here. So the shear band is here just because of this. So when you hit this soil, you, you decrease at the same time the resistance in the shear band, and then at the same time you increase power pressure, so you decrease the, the, the effective confining pressure here. So that this, this phenomenon, these two phenomena induce the reactivation of the shear band here for, in this work. I don't know if this what Yeah, you oh, want I to got say. it. Mm -mm. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any other questions, please? Uh, hello, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, okay. Uh, my name is Andy. I'm from Hong Kong Border University. Uh, thank you for your invitation. It's very inspired. And uh, I, have a, uh, uh, I have a question. In the second part, the GIS, GIS more structure. And uh, you know, the fit small scale and more test, uh, what's the, uh, I'm I'm I want, I'm curious about the temperature variation because mm. in the uh, first uh, in the first test the temperature variation is uh, nearly eight degree, uh, mm. but uh, in the small cycle it's just one degree. Yeah. I want I I want to know is there any basis for the chosen values? Yes, you you you're right. It's a very good question. So at the beginning we we thought that okay we just at the beginning during the first test. Because in the ring scale, the temperature applied should be should vary between zero and forty or thirty-five degree. So during the first test, we say, okay, we apply the same range uh, of temperature here. But we realize finally that it's not maybe it's not appropriate because it's so small scale. So the stress range is very small. But the main the main mechanism is thermal expansion. So thermal expansion is much high. So finally, we we if you we, if we consider uh, clearly the, the, the uh, scaling law in, in small scale test, we should not put the same range of temperature variation. So that's why during the, the, the more recent test, we reduce this only to one degree. And only with one degree of the chain of temperature, the, the strength, you know, the, 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 the thermal expansion, it's already high if you consider the if you consider the, the, the scanning law. So finally, for the last work, we think that in small scale test, it's better to just put one degree. Uh, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other question, please? Me, I'm Ah, okay. Hello, Zhongfeng. I cannot see you here in the screen. Don't have to see you. I have a question. Open, oh, your, oh, open your camera. Open your camera. <laughs> okay. I have a chat. We cannot see, see you. No. No. Oh. Hello. Uh, okay. Yes. okay. Uh, uh, I have. I use the Zoom in web 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 So perhaps. Oh, okay, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I have, I have okay. a question on the, on your on, on, on experiment. So when when we uh, change the temperature, the the great temperature gradient, uh, how to control the temperature gradient? Uh, uh, as we can imagine, that for example, for 
at a different scale, if the 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 initial the temperature and the end temperature, so the scale will uh, inf uh, uh, affect the 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 gradient. So I think that the this gradient will change the max structure or uh, the, the the final results. So I I I want to know how when you conduct the experiment, how to preset the temperature gradient. And you we talk have, about which pass, uh, which uh, test test. Uh, 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 the, the laboratory test on the, to, to investigate the temperature effect on the uh, shield, 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 shield behavior. Ah, so, okay. Uh, at, uh, so, you mean you mean the test on the dry shear test? Yeah, yeah. on shear test. So okay. How to control the temperature gradient? Mm. Okay, you, you're right. So it's uh, also good, good, good question because. It's actually, we, we, we thought about that when we designed this test, so I, I didn't talk about the detail, but what we did is that we put the, the same here and we put water around the same here. And then we, mm -hmm. here the red line is the, the tip, copper tip, where we circulate hot water or cool water. So within mm -hmm. this system, we, we, we check, control the temperature around the sample here. So before mm -hmm. performing this test, we put a, a temperature sensor at the bottom, in the middle, and on the top here, and we measure this, mm -hmm. when, and we, we show that the temperature in the soil, in the soil same, in the different point are similar, and then we conclude that, conclude that the temperature in the same is homogeneous, and within this, we and then after we remove the sample because during shearing that this, this sensor can influence the, the mechanical behavior, so we we remove the temperature sensor after during mechanical test. Test, but the, the first step, we put the sensor inside to, to be sure that the temperature in the soil and in the surface is, is homogeneous. And in, in, you can see that in the, in the literal review, some people hit, put a hitting part here in the bottom. So they, they do have this gradient, but, but we didn't want to do that because it's very difficult mm -hmm. to control the temperature gradient. You, you, some people say that, but in fact, in, in the ring, in the ring structure here, you do have temperature gradient between the structure and soil. But we, mm -hmm. we accuse that what we did here is, is uh, what we say, we want to, to, to see only at the interface. So what we do is the elementary test and not the small scale test. So we want to have homogeneous temperature in the same. But for the animal test, if we if if can imagine, for for example, for automated, automated test, we, we change the temperature, okay? Yes. Uh, from, uh, from the initial temperature to a uh, preset temperature. Mm -hmm. If we change the sample dimension or change the gradient, um, maybe it will change the, the, the result of the, for example, like the friction, friction angle or cohesion. That, that's why in here we wanted we wanted that this test should be a element elementary test and should not we should not have a gradient here. So that's why we want to control okay. that to want to so, impose that the temperature is homogeneous. Okay, we, we imagine the sample is uh, homogeneous. Okay. Yes. No, we, we, we measure this already. We measure the temperature inside the sample. We we put a sensor here on the top, in the middle, and in the bottom. And we, we saw that the results show that the temperature are homogeneous. Okay, okay, okay. Right. okay. Say thanks to me. Thank you. Uh, 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 the, 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 the pandemic uh, you uh, finish soon, so we can you can you can you can, you, you can visit the uh, uh, channel or, or we can uh, have a meeting together. Okay. Okay, yes, very nice. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Jofong. I think uh, uh, the many audience come back from uh, EMPC, from CMS, <laughs> because in China, <laughs> there, are lot of, uh, there are a lot of students studied there. Uh, okay, any other questions? Hello, any other questions, please? 
Okay. Uh, I just have one question for your last slide about the uh, freezing soil cycles on the uh, lime treated soil. I see you uh, the cycle cracks. Uh, cycle cracks on the sample surface. Yes, you mean that is uh, because of the uh, ice lens. Why is this ice lens is a cycle uh, hmm. shape? Can you, can you give me some explanation? Yeah, so because in fact I didn't explain, but um, we put we put the same in in the chamber. So in the top. Uh, this is the bottom, so the bottom you don't have heat exchange, but heat exchange takes only from the radial heat exchange here. So that's okay, why okay. heat exchange is heat flux is from the center to the to out the outside. Okay, 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 mm -hmm. I understand. Okay, thank you. If uh, there are no, any other questions, uh, hello, uh, Professor Tao. Uh, I'm Jin Tao, but I, I don't have a question, but I noticed that there's a question in the chat, in the chat room. Ah. May, may I read it? Okay, yes, okay, please. please. Yeah. Um, it's from Li Yu Li Lian. Hello, Dr. Tang. I have two questions in the part two, which is about how you consider the context between tile and soil in numerical simulation, like the tangent show and the normal behavior of the interactions. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I I I understand that is the question is related to the, the numerical simulation here. So in this part at that time, so it's, it's that time we use this software in the, in the software uh, we the, the software we put the temp, uh, we just impose the the time dilation to the price just imposes without temperature. So it's important when when temperature decrease, we impose a thermal contraction. And this, this is what happened here. So there, there are no temperature in this emission because what we wanted to do is just to want to see the mechanical interaction between the pie and soil uh, during this thermal cycle. And then uh, with, with this or this result, so this we use uh, Abacus, I think, where we have also thermal conductivity, thermal parameter, we can put in, inside this. But again, this, this, this software, we can simulate the thermal, uh, thermal transfer inside soil by using thermal conductivity only. And uh, thermal behavior of the soil, there are only uh, thermal expansion. There are no thermal mechanical coupling complex material uh, uh, behavior inside. And within this, uh, we saw that this, this, this can reproduce what we observe from the test. I don't know is what is this is a, the, 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 the question or not. I answer the question or not. Okay, thank you. Okay. I think you answered the question. Thank you. Okay. Any other question? I think. Okay, if no more questions, I should uh, uh, close uh, the uh this talk okay means thank you very much for the wonderful talk and uh, also thanks to all the guests and the audience for your coming i think this is the second uh, iscg webinar series and it is very successful and we will continue to periodically hold this webinar series and uh, we very much look forward to your coming our next events so so this is the close of today's event. Thank you all. Thank you, me. Very nice to hear from you and uh, wish to see you soon. After thank you. <laughs> thank you, Long everybody. Thank you, you Joshua. <laughs> okay. Thank you all. Goodbye.